Hello everyone, this is Rushida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on TensorBoard, another very interesting callback function. What TensorBoard does, it plots very important information about your model while the model is training. So later on, you can see these graphs, see these plots, and analyze how you can improve your model. So let's just dive into this. I'm going to use this autoprice.csv dataset for this tutorial and I have the link of the dataset in the description box below. Please feel free to check. And as you are in this uh, tutorial, intensive board tutorial, I'm assuming that you already know how to develop a basic TensorFlow model. So I will move really fast in the beginning so we can dive into TensorBoard and talk detail about it. We'll show you in detail how you can use TensorBoard while you train your model. You can see the data set. This is the auto price data set. We have all the information about automobile and finally we have the price. So this is going to be a regression model where we will try to predict the price. The first you try to check for null values. There is none, then define x and y. Next step is train test split, where you keep 20% of the data set for testing purpose. You can see we have a total of 25 training features. I'm using mean absolute error as loss function as this is a regression problem. And this is the model. In the, our model, we have two dense layers. You can see. We have 150 neurons in the first dense layer, and in our second dense layer, we have 70 neurons. In the output layer, only one, because this is a regression problem. Each row of the data only output one values. So in the output, we have only one neuron. And activation value, this is another activation function from value family. If you want to know a little detail about it, I have the detailed video on activation functions. I have the link in the description box below. Please feel free to check. And here we compile our model using optimizer Adam and loss mean absolute error and matrix MSE. For loss, you can simply pass this loss function or you can type this way as well, what I did here. Well, let's dive into the tensor board. First, I have to add the TensorBoard extension to this Google Colab notebook. So, load extension, TensorBoard. And then we will define the TensorBoard callbacks. So first import time because I will use time. And then name. I like to include a name so that if you run this model multiple times, so you have an indication which one. So you will understand soon what I'm talking about. So auto price dot format and time dot time. Okay, so auto price, the name, and then it will include the time when the model is training. Tensor board, it gives you this underline simply because I didn't import. So from callbacks import TensorBoard. Okay, so now you define TensorBoard and log directory. So we need to create a log directory. So in the sample data, I will create a new folder name logs now copy path include it here dot format name the name that i just added okay oh sorry it should be here then histogram frequency one so this is our tensor board. All you needed to do in the tensor board, I provided a log directory and a histogram frequency one. That means after every epoch, it's going to create a histogram. Uh, we will see pretty soon what that means. Okay, now model.fit. 
x train y train then epochs uh, 60 validation data test y test and then finally i want to put callbacks this tb that we defined here tensor board tb let's run model training is done now let's call the tensor board okay tensor board log directory so this is our log directory run it can take a little bit of time so you can see this is the tensor board you can see you go to the scalars as you see this auto price the name uh, of the tensor board I provided and it included a time and then train on validation so this orange one is the uh, loss epoch loss for train and the blue one is epoch loss for the validation so you can see it gives you very uh, once you put the cursor on it it gives you the value then you can see epoch mse so this is mean squared error for each epoch for training and validation both you can see that you can get the distribution so what distribution means you know what distribution means um, so you get the bias and weights so the distribution of the bias for dense layer one and distribution of the kernel that means the weights that's also for dense layer one you can see dense one and dense two so we have only two dense layer so it gave you the distribution of bias and distribution of weights both for both dense layer one and two you have the histograms here as we put histogram frequency one so after every epoch it made a histogram of bias and histogram of weights so for dense layer one you have 60 histograms they all look pretty much same the distribution and here also the distribution of the same pretty much the shape of the histogram pretty much the same and you have uh, dense layers two this is the uh, bias and this is the uh, weights for dense layers two so you can see these are the pretty common histograms isn't it cool okay now let's see if you want to change your model like uh, instead of 150 i put 100 in my dense layer first one and second one maybe 50 just to check how the model performs if you have less number of neurons okay so run the model compile the model and then what i would like to do i would simply include so include another code cell and i copy this tensor board code and name one i will include auto price one then tb one and here i put name one i just change it okay run it and then model.fit you put tb1 run it again okay the model training is done again let's run this tensor board again so now what you can see in scalar you have two of them auto price the first one and you can see auto price one the one that we just ran and you have red and blue two colors and you can see the epoch loss towards the end of the 60 epoch pretty much it meets in the same place right the epoch loss so you can see that we could um, uh, go away with less number of neurons as well it would pretty much give us a similar kind of results at the end of the day
And same here, epoch MSE, I mean, each epoch, you get the uh, mean absolute, uh, sorry, mean squared error. And you can see they also pretty much meet in the same range towards the end of 60 epochs. So if you want, you can try with different kinds of models, different kinds of optimizer, loss function, matrix, and then run with TensorBoard again. And you can easily see uh, the difference in your TensorBoard as soon as you are done model training. So isn't it very convenient? Here you can see the documentation of TensorBoard. And you see there are all the other uh, parameters available for TensorBoard. If you want, you can try some of them. I have the link of this page in the description box below. Please feel free to check. And that's all for today. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel to stay tuned. Like, comment, and share as well. Thank you so much.